Oh my gosh. Oh, look, we can go back if we wanted to. That's actually pretty nice. Die. Sorry, dumb dog. Ooh. -hoo. I've been playing that game hashtag blood. And I love the art. I hate the gameplay, but love the art. And um, in hashtag blood, or I've seen a lot of reviews of it on Steam, which by the way are like less than an hour. All the people that are like saying it's the best game ever, their reviews are like less than an hour. Less than three hours for sure, I'll tell you that much. Um, anyways, as the game goes on you start finding bosses and doing literally like like more and more combat, it's, it's not great. So what I'm trying to say is, in that hashtag blood game though, People have been saying, oh my god, this is like a living 90s cartoon. It's like Cuphead. And I'm like, that's crazy because this game looks like a living 90s cartoon. Hashtag blood looks exactly like Dexter's Laboratory. Which maybe started airing in 99. But I feel like that was pretty much it. And it also looks sometimes less like Dexter's Lab and more like um, Powerpuff Girls. I understand that they're made by some of the same people. That's why the art is so similar in both shows. But it doesn't change the fact that they do have some distinctions between the two of them. The music in this game is insanely good. It is like a huge part of what makes this game so good for me. It's like this great like jazzy feel. This game really reminds me of that 190s movie, um, Cats Don't Dance. Fantastic. The fact that it's got this like, ooh, jazzy soundtrack, and also the fact that it's uh, starring like an all animal cast. Oh, this rocks, are you kidding me? Man, this is a good level to get rich. There's so much stuff to destroy. Just looking for some secrets. 40 secrets? You've got to be kidding me. I hope there's not like 60 in the next one and then 80 in the next one and so on. But there is the fearsome 5, so it could do that and go all the way up to 100. Two more safes. Ooh, here's one. Uh oh. Mugshot. You called me a joik. You can't do that. Hey, you can't do that. I ain't a joy. Forget about it. How come Spider-Man doesn't sound like a New Yorker? Yeah. Yeah, that's something to think about, isn't it? You're welcome. You want a red pill? Why doesn't Peter Parker have a New Yorker accent? Try to sleep now. With that knowledge. Shit, who just knocked my... You bastard. Okay, be careful. Just gonna lower ourselves down. Alright, hurry up. Uh, oh! S s oh my god, Sly. Be someone lives there. Jesus Christ. Are you gonna send money to that family? Whose home you just destroyed? I watched the coolest video about why Spyro 1 has like such dope levels that everyone's obsessed with. And I've been seeing a bunch of them popping up in my YouTube recommends. It's like tons and tons all the time different people being like the most dreamlike levels in all of gaming and it's like some of them are Spyro 2 or whatever but um, I watched this great one on Spyro 1 I'll put it in the description don't know the guy it was amazing it was fantastic he talks about how the color palette well, he talks about how a lot of things come together but I think the biggest the biggest thing was really just the simplicity. Um, plus the color palette for each level is restricted to like, usually three. Um, compared to in the Reignited Trilogy where they will have many more colors. And the Reignited Trilogy does look awesome, but it looks different. For sure. It doesn't really matter I think when it comes to Spyro 2 and 3 though. Not as much as it does when it comes to 1. In his video he goes over the fact that the HUD in Spyro is like 3D elements. The um, gem counter that ticks up and down is like actual golden 3D letters that like rotate and stuff like that and really they just were so excited to show off the 3D it feels like. Which makes sense because it looks so good. 
This is a fun level to explore. It's oh, you bastard! Oh, we have zero lives. Where can we get more lives? Oh, well, it doesn't matter.